Yo, what's up, viewers of YouTube? Tyler here of Chico Crypto, bringing you another episode of Breaking Down the Blockchain. Today's episode, I'm gonna be breaking down Ontology, the new multi-chain system constructed by Jun Lee and members of NEO's private branch, OnChain. So the technology behind this project is downright amazing, but understanding it can be quite a challenge. So today, let's unpack the technology that is ontology. Ontology can be described as a chain group or chain network that allows mapping between different chains and traditional information systems. Ontology is the connector between blockchains. The core of Ontology is a complete distributed ledger system, which includes the core ledger, a smart contract system, and a security system. Ontology and its distributed ledger technology use a decoupled architecture that supports the Ontology ledger by default, but can also support NEO, Ethereum, and other blockchains as the underlying layer. So, the aim of Ontology is to build a bridge between the real world and distributed data systems. Businesses in the real world are diverse, complex, and specialized. In the future, they will need to use a combination of public chains and private chains. Thus, different business logics will require multiple chains to meet their business scenarios. This is the reason for Ontology's decoupled multi-chain structure, and it takes the form of a matrix grid. Public chains like NEO, Ontology, Ledger, and Ethereum can provide basic common services such as entity mapping, protocol support for data exchange, and smart contracts. On these public blockchains, each industry, geographical area, or business scenario can have its own unique service chain that meets its requirements for access, compliance, governance, and consensus. This matrix grid architecture creates a versatile network where collaboration through chains will grow as the network grows. Service chains will connect to each other through ontology computational platforms, creating interactive chains for cross-chain information exchange. So let's first take a look into the distributed ledger and the base layer of the ontology ledger. The ontology ledger supports the Onteron consensus engine. The core consensus algorithm of the engine is a new consensus called VBFT, which combines proof of stake, verifiable random function, and Byzantine fault tolerance. VBFT can be summarized like this. First, proposal nodes are selected from the consensus network in accordance with verifiable random function. Each of the nodes will independently propose a block. Next, verification nodes are selected from the consensus network in accordance with VRF, or Verifiable Random Function. These nodes collect the blocks from the network, verifies their validity, and then votes on the highest priority candidate blocks. Then, multiple confirmation nodes are selected again in accordance to VRF, and perform verification on the voting results of the verification nodes, and they determine the final consensus results. All nodes then receive the consensus results and begin a new round of consensus. The randomness of VRF and the alternating of proposal nodes, verification nodes, and confirmation nodes is very difficult to predict, thus it improves resistance against malicious attacks. The ontology ledger adopts a modular architecture which supports pluggable consensus algorithms, which can be replaced with others such as POS, DPOS, DBFT when applicable. Let's now take a look at the core protocols, specifically the distributed trust framework. How is trust built within ontology? Well, the ontology trust model generates trust between entities using both centralized and decentralized models. Different models can be used according to the specific scenarios and needs. With the centralized trust model, one or a group of entities act as the trust anchor. A trust relationship between the entities is established based on that trust anchor. So the trust anchor specifies the entities it trusts and other entities can then designate who they trust. This formation creates a trust tree and the paths for trust delivery are created. Each node in the trust tree has a trust path to the trust anchor, which signifies a chain of trust. 
When one node interacts with other nodes in the tree, an entity can verify with the trust anchor, thus establishing a tree of trust or chain of trust. So public key infrastructure is the most mature and widely used centralized trust model, and it will be adopted as the model for centralized trust within ontology. This centralized system is great for some scenarios, but unsuitable for complex trust relationships. This is where the decentralized trust model comes into play. Within this trust framework is the distributed identity protocol, ID. Ont ID maps and links different authentication services of a single entity, such as a person or a device. Each Ont ID corresponds to an Ont IDO description object which is used to record the entity information such as their public key or ONT ID. This serves as public information storage in the distribution layer of the ontology ledger, Ethereum ledger, Neo ledger, private ledger, or a combination of the four. Each ONT ID is a type of uniform resource identifier. This allows the entity to manage their own identity and allows them to register public keys to indicate ownership of that ID. Ont ID supports multiple digital signature algorithms, thus allowing Ont ID the ability to bind several private keys to one ID. This will enable multiple industry identification scenarios. The owner of Ont IDs can authorize other Ont IDs to exercise management rights over their own Ont ID. So there is also the multi-source authentication protocol, which includes two modes, external trust certification where ontology binds an ONT ID to an external trust source with a self-signed verifiable claim. These trust certifications can be self-introduced, such as through social media and e-banking. They can also be introduced through trust anchors, which are government organizations, enterprises, and public institutions. The second mode of multi-source authentication is between ontology entities. Ontology uses verifiable claims to prove certain attributes of an entity, which has anonymous functionalities. Using zero-knowledge proofs, identity claims can be verified without being made public. So for example, today you have to show your driver's license to prove you are over 21, which has details you may not want disclosed. With the Ontology Network, you can confirm you are 21 without ever disclosing any other details. In ontology, the user has complete control over their own data. The protocol again uses these verifiable claims performing asynchronous authorization that supports delegation with fine-tuned access control. So moving out of the distributed trust framework, the next core protocol is smart contracts. Ontology adopts the Neo virtual machine, written in Go. This executes and implements logic control to ontology's application layer. As we know from some of my past videos, the Neo virtual machine has high scalability through deterministic call trees, which allow for dynamic sharding. So now how do contracts communicate with the distributed ledger? Ontology has designed the shared contract model that separates application demands into two parts. Number one is for data storage called the data contract. And number two is for business logic, called the controller contracts. This allows the system to have better scalability and flexibility, and it enables dApps to share their data with each other using generic protocols despite the business they are in. The trust system built with effective identification and authorization allows data to be stored effectively on Ontology's ledger and provides unrivaled data protection. Now that the core protocols have been covered, Let's break down some of the application protocols and their modules. Ontology's application framework provides a rich set of protocols and modules that enable third-party dApps to be quickly built without having to understand the complexities of the distributed ledger. The application framework module looks like this, and dApps will interact with Ontology through this framework to achieve true decentralized trust. So, Let's first look at how data is transferred through the data exchange protocol and the data trade module. First, a data requester finds data they would like to purchase and deposits funds to the contract address. This sends a purchase data request to the provider 
and attaches the information required for the user's authorization. The provider, after receiving the request, accesses the user agent and initiates an authorization request. This agent can confirm the identity of the provider on demand via ontology. The data provider generates a one-time session key, uses it to encrypt the data, and sends it to an intermediate storage system, such as IPFS. The data provider then calls the smart contract to check the funds deposited by the requester. If the amount is correct, the position is locked until the transaction is complete or canceled. After the requester receives a notification of the smart contract, they get the data from the intermediate storage and then decrypt it with the session key. And boom, the data is exchanged. Ontology will have a fully distributed data trading and collaboration framework. And included in all of this is the cryptography and security modules. And this will ensure secure computation of data. Also embedded in this is the user authorization protocol and module. And this will give the granular control over user access and control. A final piece not talked about much is a global DB or global database, which is a pluggable key value database. It is optimized for blockchain and IPFS, and it supports state sharding and off-chain services. And it's going to be applied for big data and artificial intelligence. Well, viewers, that was my best breakdown I could muster of the ontology technology. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks, everyone, and as always, cheers.